Dr. Keeler. Uh, that was a wonderful talk, and, well, and you're you. not a curmudgeon. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> well, I, um, I'll ask my question, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll explain why I ask it. Um, regarding PSA screening, the IOM recommendation, uh, how many people or what percentage would you think that recommendation condemns patients to a horrible death from prostatic carcinoma? And I will use an ad hominem discussion. In my own case, I was age 58. Mm -hmm. In 1991, Bill Catalona published in the uh, New England Journal of Medicine that we should start screening. My partners and I decided we would start screening in my practice. I got a PSA, I had no symptoms whatsoever. My PSA was 24. I repeated it, it was 26. I had six biopsies, they were all 100% Gleason score six. I went out to a Horsinki at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, he saw me and said, I think you've got nodal involvement on both sides, looking at my CT scan. And he said, uh, uh, I want permission to do a bilateral orchiectomy. Uh, he did a radical prostatectomy on me. My gland was 100% replaced by prostate cancer. It went a centimeter into the urethra. He had to go back in and take another centimeter of the urethra. And I'm totally continent, thank God. Uh, but I am now 23 years later. If it were not for the PSA, I would have been condemned to a miserable death. Yep. And I don't think that panel <coughs> did this country any favor. I'm wanting to your comment. In full agreement, Dr. Keeler. I mean, we, uh, a lot of us in the audience here have, uh, you know, some gray in our hair and remember when we trained that we had to be experts in treating and uh, tell the residents today that, you know, if five, ten years from now, this may go back to this, we had to be experts in treating spinal cord compression. That used to be part of our boards. We had, we had questions that actually pertained to spinal cord compression on the urology boards because it was so common. And we just don't see that, that patients presenting uh, in advanced stages like that anymore. And uh, unfortunately, we probably will go back to that. Chris. Good morning, Ron, and uh, I must say that was such a great talk. So many Thanks. of those uh, opinions you espoused I share, and uh, I feel like a curmudgeon now. <clears throat> I guess my question for you, though, was I saw that CT scan under the uh, lumbotomy title and your description of weird vasculature, and I thought to myself, well, why not just stick a needle in that and freeze it? Go home the same day, save a few bucks, your comments. Absolutely an option. <laughs> Good morning. Great talk, Ron. Uh, Ron Sircone from Pittsburgh. Question for you. In your data, when you showed the number of radical nephrectomies versus partial has swung dramatically, do you feel that's totally a, a trend in urology surgery in general, or do you think it's skewed because obviously being at a referral center, you'll get a lot of the partials that guys in the community who maybe don't do laparoscopic robotic or saying, I'm going to send them down to Ron, so that your numbers may be, rather than the average community urologist, you're doing a lot more partials because of the patients sent to you. Uh, the, the first slide, the, the slide I showed right before that was actually national data showing that the increases in uh, the partial nephrectomies have exploded uh, nationally. Um, and the, the demographic studies show that the, the, there is an increase in all stages of renal cell carcinoma, not just small, small renal masses, large renal masses, and death from renal cell carcinoma, which kind of flies in the face of uh, the logic that would say that we should have a decrease in the death rate since we're finding more and more smaller tumors. You know, we're finding them at an earlier stage. So it's, uh, but, but it's increased across the board, and partial nephrectomies are increased across the board. After John's question, we'll wrap it up. Okay. okay. Uh, John, Dr. Rubenko, ex excellent keep, talk. John, um, keep in mind that only people ask me questions are my friends. And that's not fair. Right. We love the but Pittsburgh, anyway. West Virginia contingent. <laughs> and well, my dad. I'd like to thank you for your outstanding talk and, and really um, almost apologetic at times. You never have to be apologetic about being honest, and it's kind of refreshing at these meetings to actually see an honest lecture. But uh, my question to you is um, when you, we have a, quite a few patients that we do partials on, we send the frozen. It's negative, and it comes back positive on the permanent. 
what is your routine? Uh, what do you routinely do with these patients? I, I, I think you have to, because I'll, I'll actually get referrals like that a couple times a year where somebody did a partial nephrectomy somewhere else. The biopsy report says it's a positive margin, the pathology report. And then the patient comes in wanting to know what to do about that. And part of the problem is if I know that urologist, like if I got a referral like that from you, I would know that you did an honest job, but you don't know everybody in the community. And it's a problem, because what I do personally is when I, after I get the specimen out, I inspect that, and you have to be absolutely honest with yourself. If you've looked in that crater, you can find no additional tumor. You look at the specimen, and you can tell if it's glistening, you know, smooth tumor versus something that's been cut across, and you can be honest with yourself. You know for sure that there's no residual cancer in that crater. I tell the patient that that, you know, that was up against some sinus fat, that was against the collecting system, whatever. Don't worry about it. Same thing with the capsule. I can't tell you how many times I get cap, and I've recently told my pathologist about this. Uh, you get positive capsular margin, they call it, because as you, uh, the first thing we do is, uh, is circumscribe the capsule around the tumor, and often just like manipulating it, the capsule will kind of fall off if it's a, a truly a T1 tumor. The capsule will fall off. We send that to the pathologist separately, but they don't count that as the margin. They count the margin because they have visible tumor right under the capsule, so I get called a positive margin. Doesn't mean there's cancer left. I think if you're just honest with yourself, I, I wouldn't worry about any of those patients. I mean, the recurrence rate's going to be zero. Ron, thanks for a great talk. Thanks. Thanks,